Welcome in, welcome back. And I'm gonna have to rename this uh, from the clam bake to the crab bake uh, for the simple fact is I couldn't find any fresh clams and I'm not gonna do frozen. So we didn't have any fresh clams. Um, they had only like a little bit left, so no clams, but I got uh, crawdads. I I'm gonna go over it anyway. We're not gonna miss anything. Don't worry about it. Plus it's gonna be called the birthday crab bake because this is my birthday weekend. And I'm starting it off already. Uh, this Friday, I'm making this uh, crab bake for myself, pretty much. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, not too many ingredients. This is all about technique and how to do it, uh, how to layer it. Um, so if you don't have if you don't have this, then you're gonna need a cheesecloth. So um, either this or a cheesecloth, and this can go both ways. So either or um, I prefer one of these. It's a little, you know, if you know what you're doing, it can be. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, it can be a little bit more messy, but we really don't care because of the way I'm going to do this today. I'm going to add three things into one and we'll use this as a separator for our shrimp and our crab. All right. So that's just one difference right there with the cheesecloth. And the second difference is going to be that, again, there's no fresh clams, but we got some beautiful substitutes. So let's get right into it. All right. So Milan's birthday feast here, our lunch feast here. So starting in the back, we're gonna start over here. I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with this, but this is called a crawdad, a crayfish, um, a, a sand dab, or no, not sand dab, but those are the three different names for it. Um, they're freshwater, um, they're found in California and in the Gulf, all right? And there's the tail right there. They look like little mini lobsters. If those of you that don't, haven't had one, they look like little mini lobsters, check that out. And they are delicious, and I'm gonna show you how to eat them as well. All right, so you snap off the back here. I'll just do one for a demo because they're gonna be scorching hot by the time we're done. So to eat this, what you do is you, this tail here, you take it, you turn the tail, you pull it. There's a little bit of his, you know, stuff going on right there. You get that out of the way, just a quick pinch and tear. Get that out of the way. All right, and then from there, you twist the tail, right? Boom. Then you have the tail in right there and you put that in your mouth and whoop, delicious, but these are raw. So I'm not gonna be eating it. We have some crab legs here. I didn't wanna go with whole crab because of the way that we're gonna be doing this. It's gonna be better that you have your crab broken down um, because I don't like to cook the guts and all that. It kind of pollutes the way it is. So I like to have it broken down. Now, if you're doing lobster, it'd be a little bit different. All right, <clears throat> then we have a combination of uh, pork and beef sausage here, hot pork and beef combo. Um, we have our mussels here, and then we have, um, those are our, our seafood. Oh, and then we have some shrimp over here. You guys can't see it, but the shrimp are over here in the water. So we have a big old bag of shrimp here too as well, sitting in the water. So we have shrimp, crawdad, crab, mussel, hot sausage. Oh, another thing too, there's no there was no um, corn. So there no mussels and no corn, guys. No corn, honestly, there was no corn. So we can do this with bread as well. So we'll substitute that for bread for our dipping sauce. Getting back to the spices, we have, and look at how bold these spices, I mean, not bold, but amount wise, we got to go big with this because the water is going to cook it down. So we have um, uh, garlic powder, black pepper, red chili flakes. I love this stuff. Uh, and then my lemon pepper. Caught you with that one, guys. Um, and then my plate here was going to be for our shrimp, but our shrimp is too wet. So let's get that plate out of the way. And I'm going to show you how you layer these flavors and you get all of that clam bake going on and how to use that water even after you're done with the clam bake. So let's come up a little bit higher today so you guys can get a nice, try to get a look into that bowl. Because the only thing that we have to cut up today is going to be the, um, the onions and the garlic. And let's get to that first. So we're going to bring out our buddy like that, and I make quick work of the garlic. That's how you do quick work. Only thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take that onion, get that onion going. All right, so we're gonna get our garlic, put it right on in there. And we want a lot of garlic for two reasons. We're gonna use garlic twice in the beginning and in the end. All right, so this is the beginning garlic. tray over here. Put all our garlic in 
higher. All of our garlic and liar. Just like that. Keep trying to keep everything nice and neat. You know, I'm always looking up hacks to make this fun. I'll show you next time. How about that? And then we'll cut this in half because we want to use it with the chop I add, right? I'll go like that. And we'll get the chopper up here. One, two. Throw that little guy in there, and then we'll go for the other half. That way, we just know that it's going to come out perfect. We don't have to worry about uh, the skin being on there or the um, it not coming out right or it getting caught on the blade. This way, we're solid and good to go every time. And we're going to grab that garlic because these are going in together. We don't have to worry about separating them. Anymore. We're going to have about a full cup of onions and garlic. And that's what we're going to do. All right, and I'm gonna take this onion again, get him in the middle. And one, two. Nice, let's get this going. Take this out for now. You don't need it just yet. We'll get to that. Put this garlic over here. Yeah, buddy. All right, set this off to this side. I need a large spoon today. And let's go with this one. I think I just washed everything. We'll go with those two guys today. We'll see which one works out better. Put our knife over here. Doubt we're gonna do it again. And when I say a little bit of olive oil, because we're looking for the water in the sauce, this is gonna be all your sauce right here in this big old bucket of a pan. So a little bit of olive oil. Turn that down to medium. You see that just got that pan was hot and that olive oil hit it, and we just had a nice little smoke fest in here. And all the way down, I can even go a little bit lower. That's the lowest. All right, I could have sworn it went lower than that, though. All right, all in with everything. Put it a little too fast. I'm going to turn that way down just to slow it all the way down. And this onion and garlic. It's going to be in here just for about 45 seconds to get it translucent. Not even translucent, but it's going to cook all the way through the whole meal. Right, so we come over here. We're going to grab our sausage first. All right. And this is just about, I would say, three, three and a half pounds of sausage. Turn that back to medium. And... All of our sausage goes in here. We want these to sweat and create that. We want the oil to come off of that, that sausage. We want that, that little uh, film that we, not film, but the grease that comes after that. We're going to turn all of that into sauce. Uh, so these are going to cook down for about mm, five to seven minutes on medium. And at this point, if you like, um, People like to cover it to keep all that moisture in there and going. We don't really need to worry about that, but the simple fact is, is they're going to secrete their own oil, A, and B, when we start to layer in the um, different um, uh, uh, seafood, it's going to create a lot of oil because they have, they, they, no matter how much you hold them and dry them out, they're always going to have some oil in their sea creature. Come on. All right. So we're gonna let these get nice and sweaty and get their oils going and everything. And the first thing we're gonna drop in is gonna be the crayfish because those can go directly in and get cooked directly on, unlike the shrimp and the crab, which has to steam. So the crawfish and the um, mussel is gonna go in, it's gonna go crawfish, then seasoning, then mussel, 
and then we put the topper on and then we're going to go shrimp and then crab. All right. That's the way you layer it up and then you take it out and stuff. And oh, we forgot one thing. We do have one extra. Hold on one second, guys. I got a surprise for you. Oh, yeah. Titus, I'm going to show you how to make this quick. So what we're going to do with these titers, we're going to do what? Say five, four or five. show you what you do with a potato to get it into the game and into the mix quick. Give it a stir. Nobody's sticking. And a little oil going. All right, so we're going to wet these and then I'm going to show you how to get these cooked really quick. Right? Now what you're gonna take is you're gonna get your, do I have one? Nope. You're gonna get your knife. Okay. Make some room. Put that back. What you're gonna do with these bad boys, you're just gonna give them a knife, jab, and stab. <laughs> gonna cook a lot quicker like this. thing that's going to get in there, aside from those crawfish, is going to be those potatoes once that water starts to cook down. And we may even put those in some water by themselves. I think that's what I'm going to more than likely do. Yeah, I like the way these are coming up. But I'll put them in a medium-sized pot so that they'll start to boil a lot faster than if they were in a really large pot. People like to put them in a large pot. That water has to get hot. And then the potato has to get hot. That's a lot of surface area. If you crowd them and then add water, they'll actually cook faster. And that's why they tell you not to crowd things so you don't burn it. But in our case, we're going to use it to our advantage and crowd them. Now I got some nice oil coming off of there. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Nice. Those onions are not burning. I got nice oil going there. I could actually go for some more. I thought that was going to be enough to create this whole oil that I was looking for. But once the water hits it, it'll probably be really, really nice. Let's go ahead and try one of these bad boys. Got a few little sears on there, all the onion and garlic on it. We want that to be a little bit more firm. It goes through about two different stages of cooking. It's really, really kind of, not really firm, it's pretty firm when you look at the casing on it. Then that casing gets soft, and then when it starts to get really, really done, they firm back up. And you want to <clears throat> make sure you get them nice and firm back again before you start to add anything else or else you'll have just a musky sauce. And that onion and garlic is taking up a little more oil than I thought.
All right, perfect. Let's see if we got it a little bit more firm now. Doesn't take long. That's a little bit more firm. I still want it even more. But while we're waiting, we're gonna get our crawdad over here. All right. Now, normally I do this with a uh, very, very heck. Ah, almost forgot one thing. My, yeah, I almost forgot this. That's, I almost forgot that. That wouldn't have been good. There we go. Nice few burnt pieces on there is what I'm looking for. All right, here goes the craw. All in. Now, these bad boys are going to start to get the heavy seasoning. So we come over here. We get the garlic powder. Oh, whoa, I remember that. Don't do that. That's so silly. I'm just going to give it to it. Garlic powder. Boom. Then I'm going to come over here with my favorite in the world is the dehydrated butter and seasoning. This one is the uh, store-bought one. This is not the one I got. I get up in the uh, in Monterey for the specialty guys. This is the store-bought one, which is pretty darn good anyway. All right, then I come with the red chili flakes. You guys can see it's completely into this pan. You notice that all these herbs and spices are sitting literally right on top of the crawfish. And I'm not gonna stir this or let it cook down. I'm gonna let that steam do its thing. I'm gonna put a top on this in a second. Because at the end, this is gonna be the base for everything. Now what you do is you take your muscle and you put it right on top. Now that seasoning is gonna go down into the crawfish, hit the bottom and they're gonna come back up in a steam form and steam our muscles. So now the muscle doesn't need any flavor onto itself, but I'm gonna still garlic them at the end. got that going. Let's put a little salt on our potato. Salt the water. That's all we want for our potato. All right. Now we have the shrimp next. Let's take the shrimp out of the water. Me personally, when I'm doing a clam bake, I don't like my shrimp peeled. I like a raw shrimp to start with, and I like a shrimp that I have to peel when I'm doing the clam bake. Plus, these are gonna steam straight through, right? So I'm not gonna peel these, absolutely not. That casing is gonna give me my flavor and my protection, okay? So I am absolutely not gonna peel those. I highly recommend that you don't peel them when you're doing a clam bake like this. If you're doing a, you know, of course, if you're doing like a a pasta or something like that, of course. But something like in this case, or if you're doing a fry, you could even leave the skin, the skin on. I love those, um, the, the uh, Asian style, um, the full shrimp with the head on it. God, I love those ones completely fried. You can eat the skin. Excellent. 
All right, so now we have that water coming down off of those uh, for those muscles and off of the crawdad, and we are in the mix. Now I'm going to put a little black pepper on top of this these clamp on these uh, muscles. All right. Then we're going to hit them with the Cajun. Now they got a little bit to drip. Now they got some drip. All right, beautiful. Now we got all that steam. We don't want that to go to waste. We'll crank that a tad. Get that water going. And what's beautiful about this is these potatoes, when they start to get cooked, they're gonna start to get that start that starchy water going on. And then what you do is you take that starchy water and you filter it over. And if you put your salt in and then stir your water, it aggravates the water, which makes it even move uh, uh, heat up faster. So what we're gonna do is we got that salt in there. Now we're gonna give that water a little agitation. Aggravate that water a little bit. And see your water starting to get that starch in there. So plus those, those potatoes have holes in it, so it's really secreting quite a bit of starch. And we want that starchy water because we can start to pour that into our clam here, which will assist it in speeding up its cook. It's going to be hotter and it's going to have that starch on it. So we, we want both of those. And the potato has already caught up with that. The potato's water is already boiling with that aggravation. It's already starting to turn a little bit brown. And that's what we want. As it turns browner, we will most definitely take that out and start to filter it over. It's kind of like when you save your pasta water, same premise. Save your pasta water for after you get drain your pasta. And then you have a nice starchy water, which revives the pasta better than just putting foreign water on it. All right, let me get something to transfer this water because that's a nice a bubble and it got some nice tint to it. Got some starch in that water for me. It's not like I'll need a whole lot. I'm gonna bring it in with this little guy here. And I'm gonna show you the little tint to the water and it's gonna get darker as it progresses. I don't know if you can see that slight tint of brown in the water, just a little bit of starch in there. It'll secrete more as we progress but it'll be a nice add for now. Oh yeah, we got some smells going there. Yeah, I'm gonna get more starch out of them like this. I just learned something too about um, when I was did, when I did the uh, falafel yesterday. The garbanzo bean water, when you when you um, strain the when you you know get the garbanzo bean um, from dehydration and you let it rehydrate that water, you know they're making vegan bacon out of that water. I felt so bad when I poured it off and threw it away. People are like, I'm serious. That is a thing now. Um, the water off of your chickpea, you can literally bottle it, and people are buying that. That's a thing in the store now. And people are buying, vegans are buying and making vegan bacon out of that. So you got some chickpea water after you do it, then you, you got yourself a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah, because chickpeas are scarce. Luckily, we have a lot of Middle Eastern stores around here and uh, not a lot, but you have three. <clears throat> and you can go and get your chickpeas. That's what he was waiting for. Come on with it. Nice, you see that? 
that's what we're looking for. And while that potato is cooking down, doing us our favor. Isn't that beautiful? How uh, these just two are just working together. And he got started late because we know how to stir the pot, literally. We make the potato catch up with the cooking of the seafood. It might even be done before it. And at the same time, using the water from the potato. Come on, how is that? That's a super win-win. We'll cook you down and use the last bit of your water. Let's give this a stir. Oh, hey, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, we are ready to rock and roll. What are you guys doing over here? Playing games with me, huh? Trying to trick me. Oh, yeah, you ready to rock and roll, buddy. You ready to go. Oh, yeah, you ready to go. Now I'm gonna leave that top off <clears throat> to start to, I mean, I can put that heat up a tad. Well, I'll put the top on just for another second for about another two minutes and let that reach to temp. Then I see how much fluid is in there. Then I'm gonna start to let that cook off because I have two more things that's gonna create more fluid. And I want that to cook off as it's cooking down. Make sense? Makes sense. All right, so let's get it up to temp so it could do its thing when I take the top off, all right? <clears throat> Get it hotter then because you get now the heat's going to be escaping. So I want that to stay at temp. So we got to get it a little bit above. So when the top comes off, it'll drop back down, and stay exactly where I want it. So a little bit above, guys. All right, we got a little bubbling brown sugar. Yeah, we got bubbling brown sugar over there. We got bubbling brown sugar. See what we got on the side right here to see how far we down bubbling. Okay. We're in a safe bubble. Let's see what those let's see what one of these tastes like right now. He's refirmed. Oh yeah. That's nice and firm. No mushy link there. Those potatoes are like two minutes out now. Is that crazy or what? Let's get this water going again, and then I'm going to re-season everybody. Now you can see how brown that water is, right? That's obviously much browner. All that starch goes right there on top. That's what we want. There you go, buddies. Yeah, now I got a bubble on this. Say about two more minutes, I'm gonna season it super heavy all over again. And then I'm gonna put the screen on and then we'll start to add the shrimp, I mean the crab. No, the shrimp didn't crab. So let's come over here again. I didn't really think that I was gonna need this for the second round. Oh, <clears throat> oh, almost caught myself there, you see that? All right, so let's go again. Have a heavy hand on these days, guys. Have a heavy hand, don't be afraid. I have a heavy hand. Is this my, I don't want my jerk. I want the, yeah, we go. I'm kitchen sinking right now, guys. Kitchen sink. Uh, Cajun then red chili. Red chili. Yes, I am looking forward to this. Take my dog on like a two mile hike before I eat this. Ding ding. All right, um, let's go top, address the carrots. I mean, address the carrots, address the potatoes. <laughs> address the potatoes and we need to go for another round of the garlic. 
because when these are done, I'm gonna dress everybody. Potatoes, done. I'm gonna be a little bit safer on this table, so I'm gonna go for about another two minutes. Let's get some more garlic minced so we don't have to come back around for the finishing ta-da. And then we'll be on right on point to put that screen on for those uh, shrimp. Open, top it. You don't need to worry about that garlic in there. I mean, that onion in there. <clears throat> it can mix and, mix and mesh right on top, no, no worries. And we want to go hard on this bit of the garlic because this is going to finish it off and garnish the entire dish. <clears throat> After, of course, it's all seasoned. Again, if you've ever been to a clam bake or a boil, this is more of a boil. They always, at the end, never have enough seasoning for me anyway. It's like the beginning of the dish is magnificent. And then the flavor starts to dwindle off when you get to, uh, when you're at the top, I should say like this, when you're at the top of the dish, no flavor. When you get towards the bottom of the dish, if you have like your bucket or whatever they give you, it's like no flavor. Now when you get to the bottom where all the juice is at, of course there's flavor. We're gonna separate those two today. We're gonna separate the juice from the actual muscle itself. I mean, from the clam bake itself. And then we're gonna turn that juice into something. All right. Now we have our finishing garnished garlic, which is imperative. I would say potatoes are done and they absolutely are. Potatoes are off. Was that crazy? How fast were those potatoes? 15 minutes, maybe, maybe. But potatoes done that quick, come on. Who can do a potato that quick? So I just showed you guys the secret to how to make a really quick boiled um, potato. Why get hurt? I was just about to hurt myself. Why get hurt on your birthday? So here, do it like that. Pour them off. And I'm gonna save a little bit of that starchy water in case I need it. But I'm gonna take my potatoes out because as we all know, how long does the potato stay high? I don't know, forever, potatoes stay hot. Hence the game, hot potato. <laughs> Take your potatoes out here. Put them off to our tray. They are gonna be fine for the next 15. It's gonna probably be still smoldering, which is the beautiful thing. And then even when you cut it open, it's still gonna be hot. If you got a little bit of a cooled off exterior, Potato says, hey, I'll stay hot in the middle for you, no problem. All right, so we got our potatoes done. We got the starchy water off to the side. This has gotten more than up to temp. Everybody's on boil status, you see that? Nice little trick. We got straight boiling going on, hence our boil. Now, <clears throat> we don't wanna take any of those seasonings and move it. We're gonna take this, and him right on the top of that bad boy. Put him sliding down to the sides. Yeah, little push down action, no worries. There you go. Then you take your shrimp here. Right, got your shrimp there, shrimp du jour, and you put your shrimp right on top. That way it catches everything. Put your shrimp right there, see that? Shrimp right on the top. And on top of that, you place your crab right on top. Right? Oh yeah. Take a little bit of that crab water. Mm, yum, yum, yum. The rest of that starchy potato water now. Oh, and that's the good, good brown stuff too. That goes right, look at that good brown stuff. Look at all that starch. Yes. Right on the top. Cover that. Boom, bap. You got about 10 minutes. We can start. If you'd like, you could make you, you could go into your toasted garlic bread. Honestly, you're gonna have the flavors are gonna be so bold. I wouldn't honestly do anything to the bread except for toasted. 
I wouldn't even put anything on it. You're gonna have, once I make that sauce out of that reduction of the water, we're gonna do a heavy butter, a little tiny bit of cream, and then we'll make a nice heavy sauce out of that. I might do, I think I'm gonna do cornstarch as opposed to um, uh, cream because it's seafood, I don't wanna do a cream, so I'm gonna already have enough of that. So we'll do the butter and we'll do cornstarch as opposed to that. Chin on that reduction. Now that's gonna be a trick. To get this transferred is gonna be a, a, a little bit of a trick because at the end, we're gonna to have to probably do a uh, strainer, which is no problem. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice and fancy to way you <laughs> how you transfer it over. All right, so bear with me doing the transfer. All right, guys. So so we are at our time. We have reached the point where everything has been boiling. All of our crab, all of our shrimp, everybody is nice and cooked. Let's take a peek at the crab. I know that crab is beautiful. Look at that crab. Oh my goodness. I need tongs now. See? This looks so awesome, guys. This is all mine. This is all mine. Happy birthday to me. Let me take a look at my shrimp here. Crab is on point. My crab, my my uh, shrimp are about that's a lot of shrimp. So the bottom are done. We need to turn the shrimp. A lot of them are done. We got some. We got some tiger still left in the bunch. So let's try to go for the. Uh, I know we want it to be done, but I can't even transfer it yet. We won't even. We wouldn't even look right. We won't have it. They would be still pink. They'll still be uh, tigered out. So let's give it another three minutes until right up to the point. I'll turn it up some. Everybody should, nobody should get burned. We got a lot of water in there. All right, so the first thing that's gonna come out is gonna be the, obviously the crab. The smaller guys trying to get out of the way. Another, another, get over here. All right, I'm gonna call that shrimp done. Is this, oh, here, look at that. I almost forgot one of them. We may have a few strays. I'm gonna throw those down to the side. But everybody that's on the top, I think is pretty good to go. Yeah, that's good to go. All right, now I'm gonna grab my other set of tongs. Oh, they're on my bar, hold on a second. Grab both set of tongs, and take the shrimp out. Shrimp. We got crab, we got shrimp. You guys seeing this? Seeing this come out of here? You got crab, you got shrimp. Now you got all these mussels and crawfish. Woo! Woo, you seen that move? I hit a, I hit a dance move on that one. Oh man. All right, so now we're gonna bring this over here and try to get these out of this. This is gonna be bananas, guys. All right, I'm gonna have to spoon some of this out first because this is just so much. Feels like Thanksgiving all over again. So I can make my sauce. And let's see if we can get it out of here. All right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> All 
All right, let me get something. That is crazy. All right, I can host this. All right, want that picture? And then when we're done, obviously not now, I am going to make that into a bananas crazy sauce after I'm done. I'm gonna thicken that up, not too much. And that's gonna be a dipping sauce for all of that. And then understand that I didn't even be able to pour out the whole pan. So there's even more mussels, uh, crawdads and all that good stuff sitting in the pan waiting for us to eat. So in conclusion, guys, if you don't have a cheap uh, cheesecloth, you can use the layers. And I just wanna show you all the flavor that are on these mussels and they didn't even get direct seasoning. So just letting you know, if you do it right, everybody will get hit and everybody's gonna have a whole lot of flavor. All right, from me to you, happy birthday to me. And if it's your birthday month, happy birthday to you. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me on my birthday plant page.